Good morning. Today is Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. So we call the first book of the Torah, the first of five books, the book of Bereshis. Bereshis means in the beginning. Why do we call it Bereshis? Well, because the word Bereshis is the first word in the Parsha. So very often we give the name to a portion or to a book from the first word or one of the first words that occurs. But this book of the Torah, along with the others, also has a more descriptive name mentioned by our sages. And one of the names of this book of the Torah is Sefer Hayashar, the book of the upright. Now, what I want to share with you is a very famous passage to his introduction to the commentary of the Torah by a great scholar of the 1800s known as the Nitziv, which is the acronym of his name, Rabbi Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, a great, great scholar in, the, uh, in, in Lithuania in the 1800s. And here is his introduction. He talks about why it should be that the name of this first book of the Torah should be Sefer Hayashar, the book of the upright. And he explains it is because our forefathers and patriarchs and matriarchs are referred to as Yesharim, people who are upright. And so we refer to this book which is narratives, mostly narratives about our patriarchs and matriarchs, as Sefer Yesharim, the book of the upright, meaning these individuals who we call upright. But he asked the following question. Why would we choose to refer to our greatest heroes, our patriarchs and matriarchs, as Yashar, upright, and therefore the book that tells their story, <coughs> Sefer HaYashar, the book of the upright, why don't we refer to them as Tzadik, which means a righteous person, or Chassid, which means a pious person. Why isn't it Sefer HaTzadikim, Sefer HaChassidim? And the answer that the Nitziv gives is shocking, and it is tremendously important for us to understand. The Nitziv says there's a difference between a person who is yashar, which means upright and proper, versus a person who is a tzaddik, meaning a religious person, or a, 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 a scholarly wise person, or a chassid, a pious person. What's the difference? He says, we know from history near the end of the Second Temple period, our rabbis tell us there were many tzaddikim, many righteous people, and many chassidim, there were many pious people. There were people who were focused on their service to God, study of the Torah, observance of the Torah. But listen carefully to his words. Ach lo hevi yisharim bahalichos olamim. But they were not upright in their engagement with the world. They were not upright in the way they treated others, in how they engaged in society, because of the hatred that was in their hearts, notwithstanding their scholarship, notwithstanding their piety, notwithstanding their observance, the hatred in their hearts caused chashtu, they suspected anyone who appeared to act or behave differently than them, and it brought them all the way to violence and bloodshed. Ad, until the final result was, the second temple was destroyed. Second Temple was not destroyed because people were not religious, not destroyed because people were not pious. It was destroyed because people were not yashar, 
They were not upright. They did not deal with each other properly. Sheha Kadosh Baruch Hu Yashar Hu because the Nitiv writes, God is Yashar, upright. Ve'enu sovel tzaddikim ke'elu and God does not accept tzaddikim, righteous people who are that type, meaning they're pious and righteous and religious but they're not upright in their dealings with others. Deserve, because if we have this lack of uprightness in our dealings in society, even if the reason that we have this adverse relationship with others is intended for the sake of heaven, because we think that we're right, we think that they're wrong, we think that the, the sake of heaven requires us to be angry and hateful towards them. That is so wrong that garum churbun habria vaharisos yishuv ha'aretz that causes the ruin of creation and brings about the destruction of civilization. Now, I want it to be very, very clear. The Nitziv valued Torah learning above every other activity in the world. In his own personal life, in the school, the yeshiva that he ran, the highest value was spending as many hours a day in Torah study. And certainly in worship and certainly in observance, no question that that's the priority. But the Nitziv says, without being yashar, that brings about destruction. Our patriarchs and matriarchs were paragons of yashar, of being upright. They, were, they lived in a world filled with idolaters, as we have been reading and we will be reading over the next number of weeks. They were surrounded by idol worshipers. And yet, they still sought out the good for everyone. They engaged with others respectfully, even when they disagreed. They worried about others' well-being. Avraham, praying for the people of Sodom, the wicked, horrible people of Sodom. Avraham prayed for them. Yitzchak, concerned about the welfare and well-being of this king Avimelech, who was an enemy, a pagan enemy of his. But he cared about his welfare. Voracious, this book of the Torah is a guide book for us, not about specific commandments. The mitzvot will come later in the next four books of the Torah. We're going to learn the specific rules, what we should do, what we should not do. But Sefer Bereshis, the book of Bereshis, this first book that we're studying now, is Sefer Hayashar. It is the blueprint for how we are supposed to behave how we are supposed to engage with society, how we are supposed to interact with those who are like us, and even more importantly, those who are different from us, even those who are radically the opposite of everything we stand for. Of course, as religious Jews, we need to be committed to the values of the Torah. And the values of the Torah include the expectation that we will follow God's commandments and the expectation that we will follow the model of our patriarchs and matriarchs, the Yesharim, the upright ones, in how we treat others, in how we engage with those with whom we vigorously disagree, in how we are able to find the tselem elokim, the divine image in every single human being. So this message of the Nitziv is clear. It is classic. It is a vital message of Judaism, an essential element of Judaism. And I hope 
Whether you agree with the rest of what I'm going to say today or you do not, I hope that at least this part will stay with you. And I hope that you will use it to guide your life as I hope and strive to use it to guide my life. What I'd like to share with you now is partially based on a sermon that was given last week by my friend and colleague, Rabbi Tuvia Brander, who's the rabbi of Young Israel of West Hartford in Connecticut. The sentiments are mine, and I want to be very clear, I take full responsibility for the words that I'm sharing with you publicly today. For my entire adult life, I have been and remain proud to be a religious Zionist. And because I am a religious Zionist living in North America, I have been throughout my career extremely hesitant to ever publicly comment on Israeli politics. As a religious Zionist living in North America, I feel compelled, duty-bound to support Israel, to protect Israel, to do whatever I can to be in Israel as often as I can and to encourage others to be in Israel and to live in Israel with God's help and to use all of the resources and power that I have to assist, to promote, to strengthen Israel. And Throughout my entire career, I have been tremendously reluctant to ever say anything negative or critical about Israeli politics, Israeli domestic issues, because I don't feel worthy to be able to do so. I don't live in Israel. I don't bear the burdens of being in Israel. I did not serve in the IDF. I don't pay taxes. Extremely, extremely reluctant. But there comes a time when there's an exception. There comes a time when something happens, is happening in Israel, that I feel requires me to speak up. And sadly, that time is now. As Israel prepares for elections in just a few days, there are, sadly, to my horror, individuals and groups who claim the mantle of religious Zionism. And these individuals and these groups and these parties have become safe Havens for people who espouse extremist views, hateful, bigoted, racist rhetoric, intolerance, promotion of violence. And I feel it is my obligation at this moment to speak up and to say this is not religious Zionism. This is not what we are taught in Sefer Hayashar, the Book of the Upright. Somehow, for a variety of reasons, and it's not my interest to get into that right now, over the last several years, these extremist elements have infiltrated part of the mainstream of Israeli society. They have gained popularity and shockingly, normalization of people and ideas that are criminal were treated as criminal only a few years ago. And now, some of these individuals and supporters stand on the cusp of perhaps becoming part of the establishment 
perhaps positions of leadership. And again, from my point of view, tragically, wearing the mantle of religious Zionism, which they do not deserve. These are individuals and groups who incite violence against other Jews, espouse the belief that the reform movement is worse than Hitler. That's a quote. Who hold and espouse and support positions that promote and glorify violence against others and venerate individuals who have murdered innocent Palestinian civilians and even Jewish Israelis with whom they disagree. Individuals and groups who promote or support trampling the rights of the most vulnerable populations in Israel, those who are refugees, members of the LGBTQ community in Israel, individuals who proudly declare, quote, I am a proud homophobe, and compare LGBTQ individuals to Nazis and terrorists. And here's the point. Don't be fooled that the people who are spreading this horrible, horrible ideology are wearing kipot. They have their tzitzis out. Some of them have payas. They call themselves religious Zionists. Their positions and their ideologies are antithetical to Torah values. They are contrary to the model of Yashar, exemplified by our patriarchs and matriarchs. I'll share with you a quote from one of the leading readers, excuse me, one of the leading leaders of the religious Zionist community in Israel today, Rabbi Moshe Lichtenstein. I've quoted him to you before, a great man, a great teacher. Anyone who participates in the inclusion of a group of people that worships power, is indifferent to violence, honors a murderer, and is full of hatred towards many Jews and non-Jews, anyone who supports such a thing bears responsibility for the Chil Hashem, the desecration of God's name they will certainly bring to the Knesset as, I'll put this in quotation marks, religious representatives. I want to be on record for speaking up publicly now to say this is not the behavior modeled by our patriarchs and matriarchs in the book of Bereshis, in Sefer Hayashra, the book of the upright. This is not authentic religious Zionism. My comments today are not about politics. In the upcoming elections, I fear for the soul of Israel. My friends, I want to wish you a good day. I look forward to seeing you soon in person. And I'm very open to hear your views. You agree, you disagree. I'm open. I'd love to hear it.